I would like to show you or discuss firstly the layout of the cash flow. Okay, so remember we said we're going to do activity one. This is activity one that I've got here. And um, you need to go to your pages. It's the first activity on your pages. And we're only going to concentrate on the cash flow. But I'm not going to assume that you have memorized the, um, the format of the cash flow. And I'm going to show you a very, very quick way to memorize the format of the cash flow. Okay, so now, unfortunately, I have prepared a PowerPoint, but you're going to have to subject yourself to my beautiful um, illustrations, my beautiful illustration skill. I've got a blank, 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 blank page in front of me, and I'm going to start from the bottom. So this is me. Yes, this is me. Okay, it's my drawing there. And I am an entrepreneur, and I want to start a business. Okay. So I am going to have to need a few things before I can start that business. Remember, we are busy with the cash flow. So what I'm firstly going to need, I'm going to need money. Okay, we're going to call that money capital. And I'm going to either have own capital. In other words, I'm going to put in my own money or I'm going to borrow capital. Okay. Now, this activity, this activity is called financing activities. It is when the owner finances his or her business. And remember, we're busy with the cash flow. And I'm going to introduce to you the three different activities in a very, very simple way so that you can um, remember it. So there's my financing activities. So what do I do with this money? Okay, it's either my own capital or my borrowed capital. Remember, your borrowed capital is a loan. So what do I do with that money? So I take that money and I buy stuff for my business. What do I buy for my business? So now there's my business. Okay, beautiful illustration, eh? There's my business. And what I do with that is I buy fixed assets. Okay, I buy fixed assets. And I take my surplus money and I invest it in a fixed deposit. Okay, and what do I call these activities? These activities I call investing activities. It's coming together now. So it's a very quick way to remember the cash flow. What do I do? If there's any questions, learners, please ask. Uh, Ms. Oriel is um, ready and waiting for your, for your questions. So I will pause after this if there's any questions and then we can take it further. So what do I do further to that? Now I've bought all my infrastructure. I've bought um, my machines. I've bought my tools. I bought what my vehicles, whatever I needed for the business to operate. I have now invested in my business. Where did I get the money from? The money was financed, own capital, borrowed capital, right? Now I start operating. Now I start my business and there's my operating activities. So what are my operating activities? It is buying inventory. So anything to do with inventory. Okay, so now I buy inventory and I sell inventory. I also pay tax, okay? And if I'm a company and we're going to do a company now, I pay dividends and I pay interest on loan. And I also pay expenses. And I, so my buying and selling, cash and credit, there's my credit, there's my creditors, there's my debtors. But let's not go in that too much, right? So this is basically what happens in a business. The, the owner finances his business through capital, owner borrowed, then he buys fixed assets, and then he trades, he operates. So let's turn that over into our, into, our, um, into our business, okay? So let's just see how this works with a, I'm just going to try and make that smaller, with a company, okay? Now it's starting to make sense, I hope it's starting to make sense now, okay? Right, let me just do that, it's just a bit too big. So... Now I have a company. Now I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business owner and now I want to open a company. I have three activities. I have financing activities. 
okay? I have investing activities and I have that's investing activities there and I have operating activities. Now, let's use the three activities, what I've just showed you now, and let's try and define it. My financing activities, remember I said it's capital, so it is proceeds from the issue of shares, so it's shares issued, and that is an inflow, and then it's a repurchase of shares. Okay, that's the other one. And then the last one is loans. So can you see that whether I'm a sole trader or whether I'm a company, my financing activities is still shares, capital, and loans, where I got the money from. Now I want to invest that money into my business. And what do I do? I purchase fixed assets and I sell fixed assets. That's my investing activities. And then I invest in a fixed deposit or my fixed deposit matures. So that is my investing activity. So what am I trying to do, learners? I'm trying to teach you to memorize these sections by understanding it. And then I start operating, so there we go. Now I have my operating activities there, but the most important here is I pay a dividend. And I'm sorry for my handwriting, I prepared a beautiful PowerPoint and I pay tax and I pay interest on loan. Okay, so that is my operating activities there. There's obviously the um, cash generated from operations here. Okay, so now that I have taught you to remember, remember this is I do, now that I have taught you to remember, and I'm going to take this away now, the, and teachers, please help me, the, um, the three sections of the cash flow, and I'll explain to you why I'm asking you to remember it. I want you very quickly, um, maybe the person sitting next to you, take, a, take out a piece of paper, and I'm going to remove this from the screen now, Okay, so take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down all the operating, no, sorry, not the operating, all the financing activities. I want you to write down the financing activities.
in the answer block. Okay, and you must show your workings. Please show your workings here. So before we go and calculate the answer, let's see, what do we need? So my first thing is I need interim this year, final last year. So there we go. My year is 2020, 2021. That's last year, that's this year. Okay, there I have last year's final. So I can already put that in. That's part of my answer. 247,500, that's last year's final. I also have this year's final. Please don't ignore this amount, okay? Because I'm going to show you both ways to work it out. Now they give me all this information here with regards to dividends. And they say, an interim dividend was paid. They don't tell me what the interim dividend was. They don't tell me how, what cents per share it was. So I can't really use this information on this line here. But they do say a final dividend of 20 cents per share was declared on the 28th of Feb. Okay. Total dividends for the year. Now they give me total dividends for the year. Okay. Was that amount. So what I do have is I have total dividends. I have last year's final and I have this year's final. So if I look at it this way, this is the easier way to work it out. Okay. Remember your note. Okay. I'm going to do the calculation here. Remember your note is worked out this way. Sorry, let me just get this here. All right. Let me just get the information up in front of me. I have, I'm going to do the note here. Okay. My note for dividends. I'm going to do it here. Remember, we start out with the information in the financial statement. So I've got my financial inform statement information, which is my total dividend of 835,000. Then I have last year's final, okay? And that's also in brackets because I did not pay last year's final 247,500. And this year's final, I don't put in brackets. It is 340,000. And that is the quickest way to work out dividends paid. Okay, so that's basically forcing you to do the note. It is that, that's a negative, plus a negative, um, minus or plus that amount. So it's two negatives. And then you're going to get the 742,500. Okay, and that is going to be a negative. That is the quickest way to work it out. And this is how I would have worked it out. But you can still work out this year's final. Okay, this year's interim. You know that my total dividend, okay, I'm doing it here. My total dividend is 835. That's my total dividend. How is my, my total dividend made up? Or what is my total dividend made up of? It is made up of interim plus final. And if I have the final this year, then I'm just going to minus the final. 340, and this is what Sinajongo did, and they then got the interim dividend of, and I must just see here, 835, I must just do my math, sorry, let me just do my calculation here. So it's 835 minus 340, and it's 495. That's my interim now, so that's my interim. So I'm just going to plus my interim there, and it's going to give me that amount. So that's the two ways to work it out. I can still work out my interim by taking my total minus my final. Okay, that gives me my interim. I add my interim to my last year's final and there I get that. Okay, so well done. Let's move on to tax paid. And then the rest is really, really not that difficult. So now I'm going to go back to activity one and I'm bouncing between activity one and activity two. I want to work out income tax paid. I need three amounts to do that, okay? If I want to work out income tax paid, I need three amounts. I'm going to need the income tax amount, okay? So there's my income tax amount there. What did I, or what should I have paid in tax for this year? Then I'm going to need my SARS income tax balances. And you can see that my SARS income tax balance last year was a credit 
and this year was a debit. And this is where the learners get stuck, okay? How do you treat a debit and how do you treat a credit? And that is what I'm going to show you very quickly. There are many ways to work this out, and I really don't want to take away from how the way your teacher taught you. But for me, this is a very, very quick way to remember whether I must plus or minus my debit, whether I must plus or minus my credit, and when I do that. So I want you to take out a piece of paper, and I want you to write this little, um, I call it a cheat sheet, okay? It's a cheat sheet. So let's see, there I have it. Just throw that very quickly. This 2020, and I'm just using the years here. This is this year, and this is last year. Okay, so we're now going to figure out where do I put my brackets, or where do I minus, and where do I plus. I'm using the premise that a bracket is always an outflow. In other words, an outflow is a payment. I made that payment. Okay, so when I do a bracket, I'm talking about the outflow. Okay, so when it comes to SARS income tax, last year you can have a debit or a credit balance, and this year you can have a debit or a credit balance. Right. Now, what does the debit balance mean? The debit balance means that I paid. Okay, I paid last year. And the credit balance means I did not pay. Okay, I still owe. Oh, I did not pay. The debit here, okay, means that I paid or overpaid. And they owe me. I overpaid, so they owe me. And the credit means I did not pay. Okay, so the credit at a particular time shows an outflow or an inflow. Right, so you've got that. Now you ask yourself, last year, Okay, last year I paid, therefore when in, in last year's balance I have a debit, which means that I paid this last year. If I paid this last year, I don't have to pay it this year. So,
outflow. Thank you, Castle Slay. Why is it an outflow? Because I did not pay it last year. So therefore, I'm going to have to pay it this year. So that amount is also going to be in brackets. And then my debit, I've got a debit there. Did I pay it this year? What does is, what is my, my grid say? Did I pay it this year? What are you saying? It's also an outflow. Thank you so much, Manzum Tombo. It is also an outflow. So you guys are getting it. You guys are getting it. There's my credit from last year. It's an outflow. There's my credit debit from this year. It's an outflow. If you draw this grid and if you remember it, okay, then it's going to help you greatly when it comes to doing this. So let me just do 23,800. Okay, and 4,500. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on your um, answer sheet. Okay, because you're not, you're either going to do it this way on your answer sheet. So you're going to have 4,443,500. ,440, now, I know learners that some teachers would have taught you to plus all together, and it is right. You're plusing all your negatives together to get a bigger negative. I work with outflow. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on my answer sheet. So let me show you. This is what this is going to look like on my answer sheet. On my answer sheet, I'm going to have minus 415200. So I always start with that as a negative because that must be a negative. Then I'm going to minus 23800 and I'm going to minus four, five, because they are all outflows. So therefore I show them as minuses and I'm going to get a big negative year of 443,500. Okay, so that was me doing. Now you do activity two using exactly the same way of rationalizing this. So let's see. Let's look at activity two and you must do um, income tax paid what information do we have? Do we have income tax there? No, we don't, but you should know how to calculate income tax. I've got profit before tax. I've got profit after tax. What is the difference between the two? That's a hint, okay? And then there I have SARS income tax, but now they don't tell me whether it's debit or credit. Learners, if they don't tell you, then you assume that both are credit. Okay, I'm going to type it in because I know the assumption is that both are credit because that's the normal um, content. So both are credit. So, so this is how I do it. I always start my income tax with a negative, okay, because it's an expense. So it's a natural outflow. Now I figure out that both are credit. Okay, so I write that there, both are credit. Now, how do I deal with the credits based on my grid? Okay, last year it's a credit, so it's going to be an outflow. This year it's a credit, so it's not going to be an outflow. So what I'm going to do is, because an outflow is a minus, I'm going to subtract my first credit, and I'm going to add my second credit. So the same way you look at it in terms of outflow, those are minuses and those are pluses. There are different ways to work it out, but if you look at it from the outflow, did you pay this year? Or did you pay last year? No, I didn't pay last year, so I must pay this year. Did I pay this year? Did I not pay? So that is how you work it out. Okay, it's not the only way to work it out, but learners, that for me is the quickest way to understand it. So let's just see, got it. I've got um, my first credit year is 69,300. And my second credit there is 19,800. And if you look at it that way, there we go. That's my answer for income tax paid. Okay. And if you look at this answer here, that is number two. If you look at that answer there, I'm using exactly the same. I'm starting with the minus. Okay. That is a credit and that is a debit. 
Okay, that's why that credit there will always be another minus, but that debit there is a plus because the credit is a plus there. Okay, so the other way to, to memorize it is to do it this way. Minus income tax. Okay, you're just writing down ways to remember it. Then I'm going to minus, okay, my credit. And I'm going to plus my debit. Mrs. Morris, yes. When you are done with that calculation, there mm -hmm. is a question from Castle okay. Soleil High. Okay. Will you please explain the income tax calculation? Again? Okay. okay, I will do that. Then I'm going to plus my debit there. And minus my credit. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Minus my debit there and plus my credit. Yeah. Okay. That is exactly what I was doing here. It's exactly what I was doing here. But I, I like the grid because the grid just makes more sense. So what you can do in your exam is you can, as soon as you get your exam, after your reading period, is write down your little, uh, uh, um, what I call your, your little notes. You can write it down, your memory notes. You can write it down quickly. So the question was, how did we work this one out here? Okay. How did we work it out? So I got net profit before tax. How did I get net profit after tax? I take net profit before tax and I minus, so it's 177, and I minus my... Two, four, three, nine hundred. Okay. That's how I got it. I take my net profit before tax and I minus my net profit after tax. Because if you think of your income statement, what does your income statement look like? Your income statement is net profit before tax. Okay. Then I minus my tax, remember, to get net profit after tax. So that is what your income statement looks like. So it's like that 177 goes there and then the 1, 2, 4, 3, 900 goes there. Sorry, 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 that's wrong. 1, 2, 4, 3, 900 goes there to get my income tax, which is 5, 3, 3, 100. So if this was my, in, my, my income statement, I would have my net profit before tax minus my tax to get my net profit after tax. So if I want my income tax, I just minus the two. I'm hoping that that answered the question. You're going to struggle with this, okay? Now, in the retained income note, you need um, net profit. No, sorry, in your note number one of your, of your cash flow, you need net profit before tax. So what they do is they give you net profit after tax and then you must add the tax to, to that to get net profit before tax. This is not the same thing, okay? This is a different way of calculating it. So don't become confused. Just remember that bottom part of your income statement when you uh, need to calculate anything, whether it's before tax, whether it's after tax, or whether it's tax. You can actually reconstruct it like that. So therefore, you have to go into the exam with a lot of tools. A lot, a lot, a lot of tools. Okay, so let's move on. I know we're going very slowly, but I will rather go slowly because these are the important. Often they say to you in your answer, um, express or indicate whether it's an inflow or an outflow. It really, in on the memo, they didn't show it in brackets. And that's why I didn't show it in brackets. But if they ask you specifically in the question, to show whether this is an outflow or an inflow. Or if you really, really want to be safe with your answer, then you are absolutely correct. Then I would put both of these answers in brackets to show that on my cash flow, my income tax paid is going to be in brackets and my dividends paid is going to be in brackets. So on this question, they weren't very clear uh, to show whether it's an inflow or an outflow, but learners, I would say, and this is how I would teach my learners as well, to be safe, show it in brackets, okay? So that you are showing that on my cash flow, this is going to be in brackets. So you are absolutely right, because if you do your calculation here, it's going to be in brackets anyway. Okay, so thank you for that comment. I, um, I really appreciate it. 
So let's move on. You can see I've got a blank one simply because I uh, wanted to show you what it really, really looks like on your actual cash flow because they can ask you to show any amount. So here they ask you for fixed assets purchase. Here again, we are going to have a formula or we're going to have a memory sheet that we are going to use. Okay, so fixed assets purchase. Let me just see here. Did they ask you to calculate it? I just want to go and check. My apologies. Fixed assets purchased. Let's go to the answer book there. I didn't make a copy of the answer book. Okay. They did not. They, they've given you proceeds of the sale of fixed assets and they've given you the decrease in fixed deposit. But like I said, I took it out because I want to show you how to calculate that. But this is also a very, very important calculation. So let's look at how we calculate that. Please take out a piece of paper and I'm going to show you a very, very quick way to calculate that. You need to reconstruct note number three of your financial statements. Okay, note number three is the fixed assets note. Okay, and we only reconstruct the total column. So we are going to have opening balance at carrying value as our first line. And I'm sure your teachers have shown you this again. Then we plus additions at cost. And this is the calculation that we are trying to work out. Okay, that additions at cost. So this amount here, additions at cost, right? I'm going to flip over now. And fixed assets purchased is the same thing. It is just different wording. So when I put a, when I put a question mark there, I'm trying to work out fixed assets purchased. So as in the cash flow, that is known as fixed assets purchased. Okay, remember we are busy with investing activities. Yes, how do I know this? Because I memorized it. Okay, but I'm not writing the exam. Then I'm going to minus disposals at carrying value. And I'm watching the time here, learners. We don't have a lot of time left. Okay, but it's not going to take that long. What we're doing next is not going to take that long. Minus depreciation. And that equals my closing balance at carrying value. Now, here's the thing. All three of, the, of, of that amount, this amount here, and that amount, and if I had another color, I would put it in another color, but I'm going to put that in black. All three amounts. Okay, we'll just pause for the noise. Thank you. You can just turn your mic off. All right, thank you so much. All three amounts are important for the cash flow. That there is important in note one of the cash flow. That there is also part of my investing activities. And I'm going to turn around now. There it is proceeds from the sale of fixed assets. Okay. We don't have note number one, so I can't show you where depreciation is, but that and that. I can, and depreciation, I can calculate in that, in this note, okay, in this calculation. So this is from sale of fixed assets, right. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to complete my puzzle, right. I'm going to find the information and I'm going to fit it in and I'm going to find my unknown. Remember, we are still building our puzzle. My apologies. Okay, so let's go back. Let's see here. What do I have? Oops, that's activity two, sorry. There we go. There I have depreciation. Please write that in. Depreciation, 234,000. There I have it, it's given. Okay, I'm filling in my puzzle now. I'm finding my puzzle pieces. Right, so that's what I have. Then, there I have opening balance at carrying value. 
because here it says fixed assets at carrying value. There I have opening balance at, at carrying value, 8320, 8,320,300. And I'm going to write that in immediately. Closing balance at carrying value, 900, 9,528,300. So I write that in immediately. Now all I have to go and do is find disposals. Remember, additions is my. All I'm going to have to do is now find disposals. They must give me information. That is my balancing figure. Okay. So I go and look. I go and look. I go and look. I go and look. The old equipment was sold at carrying value for 48000 They give it to you. And then they say extensions to the buildings were completed during the financial year. That is my unknown. So learners, can you see? You cannot approach cash flow from the top down. You have to bounce all over and go and find your puzzle pieces. That's what I talk about when I talk about um, cash flow. So that is a negative. That is a negative. Okay. So how do I work out this? I say... And I'm going to write down the calculation here, 8,320,300 minus 48,000 minus 234,000 minus 950, 9,528,000, sorry, 300. And it's going to give me that amount there, which is my additions at cost. Can you do that calculation, please? Can you do that calculation? And can someone put the calculation on? Colleagues, just a reminder, please complete the attendance register. We've noted that no one in this group has completed the attendance register yet. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So I will transcribe that calculation here. Learners, you have to write in this calculation. You lose marks if you don't write in the calculation. And that's what I see so many learners lose marks because they give me a final answer, but they don't show in the calculation. Okay. And I'm going to get a negative 1,490,000. Okay. It's going to be a definite negative amount there. It's going to be in brackets. So I start with my opening balance. I put in my disposals at carrying value, I put in my depreciation and I put in my closing balance and it gives me that answer. Okay, now I know that that 48,000 is that 48,000. It's exactly the same amount. My disposals that are minus there, I plus back there. Okay, and that is the standard formula for working out my fixed assets. Unfortunately, activity two does not have a similar um, example, so I can't have you practice that. But please practice this. This is worth five marks. So I've just given you five marks of your exam. Okay, and if you just follow the formula, you cannot go wrong. You memorize this formula. You go into the exam with this in your memory bag. So that's number one in your memory bank. Number two in your memory bank is this year. That's number two in your memory bank. Okay? And so these are all tools that you go into your exam with. Right. The decrease in fixed deposit was given to you, but where do you get it from? I'm not going to assume that everything is going to be given to you. Here's fixed deposit. Okay, and we're nearly done. There's about 15 minutes left, learners. Am I right, Miss Oreo, that there's 15 minutes left? That is correct, Miss Mandy. Okay. 
Okay, and I'll definitely get through all of this in 15 minutes, right? So there's your fixed deposits. There you have last year, I had a fixed deposit of 500,000 500, rand. And this year, my fixed deposit is only 100,000 rand, which means that I got money back. Okay, that was my investment. If I have a lesser investment, I got money back. So how would I show that? I would show last year's balance minus this year's balance. And can you see that it's a positive amount? Therefore, I got money back. So you write it in as you have the calculation. That's 400,000. You always have last year and this year. And the answer that you get is a positive. It means that you got money back. Just work it out that way. It always works out. Okay. Next one is the proceeds from the issue of shares. Sorry, I think I'm going a bit too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. Okay. And I'm just going to show you this quickly. Can you see why I insisted that you know exactly what is under financing activities? This is activity two. Right, there they ask you to do financing activities. This is activity one, they give it to you. But learners, I cannot guarantee that they'll give you that. Investing activities, you must know. It's everything to do with fixed. That's how I remember it. My investing activities, everything to do with fixed. Fixed deposit, fixed assets. My financing activities, it's got to do with how the business is financed. It's got to do with shares and loans. Okay, so I don't know what's happening with the loan yet. So I know that it's my proceeds from my issue of shares, my funds used to repurchase shares, and my loans. That is no brackets. That is always in brackets, okay? Because I am spending money outflow to repurchase shares. And I am getting in money when I sold my shares. Okay, so we're gonna do this and then you're gonna do the number two. Okay, you're gonna do number two. I'm gonna show you how to do the first activity. So what am I looking for? Shares, the proceeds from the issue of shares. Share capital. On the 1st of March, the ordinary share capital was 800,000. A further 200,000 shares were issued on the state. Do they give me the price of the shares? No, they don't. So what is the best way to work it out? Okay, I need to ask myself that. I'm asking you as well. Then they say, on the 29th of Feb, the company repurchased 90,000 shares at 81,000 Rand above the value of the shares based on the average price of 910. So then they give you the average price, okay? And they say that they sold it for 81,000 above the average price. How would you work that out? That's a question. Rhetorical, because I'm gonna answer it. And then loans, they say, there's my loan. So I'm just saying where, where we get the information from. I look at my loan and I look at last year's balance and I look at this year's balance to see whether it was an inflow or an outflow. So let's look at the share capital again. Okay. Sorry, let me just go to the activity so that I have the information with me. That's not that one. Ah, there we go. Yes, it's this one. Right. I'm hoping that some of you are already working on the situation so that we can figure it out. Okay. Otherwise, I just end up giving you all the answers and you don't know what to do. Now, here's the thing. We can't take the difference between that and that. Why not? because we repurchased some shares, okay? Yeah, this is our clear indicator. 
that this amount here changed because we issued more shares and we repurchased shares. So that is how that um, changed from that to that. So we must consider all three, okay? So, let me just see here. Very, very clever way of putting this activity. Um, sorry, sorry. I'm going to have to go there. We know that we've got our opening balance for our share capital of 700. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Uh, proceeds from issue of shares, 7,411,500. Okay, that's our opening balance. What happened to the share capital account? Or maybe I should actually explain to you from the only share capital account point of view. That is my opening balance. Then I issued more shares, okay, which I don't know. And then I repurchase shares and they give you the amount that the shares are repurchased at. They give you the, so this is not really an easy one, eh, guys. Let me show you here. What do they give you here? They say the shares are 90,000 shares were repurchased at 81,000 above the value of the shares based on the average price. Okay, so the 81,000 is also an indicator and there's your average price. Okay, so how did the repurchase affect your ordinary share capital account? I'm just going to put the calculation in there. I lost 90,000 shares at an average price of 9 rand 10 cents. Okay. There. So I lost my, average, my repurchase of shares, remember, always has a negative bearing. And I have a closing balance of, and I put the closing balance in. My closing balance is 800, oh, sorry, 8,281,000. Okay, so can someone work out that amount, please? And then I'll show you what the ordinary share capital account looks like. Okay, so but I can show you this amount here. I've got 819,000 rand there. So this is how I work it out. Let me show you the ordinary share capital note ordinary share capital note, this is what it would look like. Opening balance would be 7,411,500. So can you see how you must know your, your ordinary share capital note? You must know your retained income note. Eh? And then I have shares issued or repurchased. It doesn't matter. Let me put the repurchase in first. And then I have the issue. And then I have the closing balance. Okay, so my repurchase is 90,000 shares at 9 Rand 10, which gives me 819,000 Rand. I don't know that amount, but I do know that I have a closing balance of 800, sorry, 8,281,000. So I'm just reconstructing the account, opening balance, repurchase I'm going to minus. And then I'm also going to, so I think I wrote that in wrong, yeah? Then I'm also going to minus that. So it's my opening balance minus my repurchase minus my closing balance is going to give me my issue, okay? That was a very, very long way of explaining that calculation and it's 1,900,000. Okay, that's how I got that amount there and I'm going to put it in here, 1,900,000. One thing you must remember here, you cannot take the difference between the two because there was a repurchase. They give you the repurchase amount by saying that 90,000 shares were repurchased at the average price. And remember, the ordinary share capital amount is at average. Okay. Now I can work out my repurchase. Now I'm going to say... I repurchased 90,000 shares, okay? 
at 910, which gives me my 819. So can you see how that, now that calculation feeds into this calculation? Plus, I sold it for above average. So I'm going to put in the average and the above average of 81,000. Okay, so that's my average and that's my above. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Image, sorry, man. Seven million two hundred thousand. That's right. That must be used. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, sorry. That amount is right there. That amount. Sorry, let me just show you. That amount is right there. It's that amount that I made a mistake. That amount, yes. But then you say that minus minus will give you the one million nine hundred. My apologies. I just copied in the wrong amount. Okay. Is that the only question? Right, we've yes, got five. Answered, because they wanted to know why is it yeah, sorry, I used the wrong amount. Okay, so learners, now that you've got the average amount according to the ordinary share capital notes, you now just add in the 81,000 that you find in the retained income notes, that's the above average, and now you get the answer of 900,000. Okay. So that amount there has a huge influence on that calculation. And I apologize again for using the wrong amount there. With regards to the loans, and I've got five minutes left. With regards to the loans, very quickly, I simply look at my loan. Okay, so there, and the interest is not capitalized. They don't mention anywhere that interest is capitalized. So I can simply say that that amount minus that amount will give me my my loan amount, and what happened? My loan decreased, okay? My loan decreased, which means that I repaid my loan. So it's repayment of loan, okay? My repayment of loan, which is a repayment of 300,000. How did I get that? Now, here's a bit different in, in that amount there. If I take my opening balance of 1,200,000, and I minus my difference of 900,000, it's going to give me a positive amount. But because my loan is less, okay, I repaid it. And learners, I think that is, I, I don't have time for anything else. Are there any questions? And I think um, the reason why I couldn't finish was because of my, my problem at the beginning, which I now have solved. Okay, but are there any any questions before I, um, or maybe, maybe if you can give me three minutes, I can, because I know that they said we can't go over time. Let me just explain this part here. Okay, my cash and cash equivalents. So now I have opening balance cash and cash equivalents. Okay, that's my cash opening balance. And this is where learners also become a bit confused. Okay, I have my cash opening balance. I have my cash closing balance. My opening balance is, let me show you quickly, there. My opening balance is last year. I have 5,000, but I've got a bank overdraft of 220,000. So my opening balance is 220,000 minus 5,000. Okay. And so my opening balance, I have a net overdraft of 215,000 where I owe money. So if it's an overdraft, a net overdraft, then it's going to be in brackets. My closing balance, I have 56,500 in my bank account. And so what you do is you always minus up. Okay. So. I put that in, that's a positive amount because that's money I have in my bank account. So it's cash, that's an overdraft. So I put it in brackets and then I minus up. So it's 56,500 minus, minus. So if I minus a negative, I'm actually plusing. So my net change is 271,500. That's how you work it out. How do I explain that? There's my note. Okay, last year I had an overdraft of 215,000. Now I have money in the bank of 56,500. So what happened was money came into my bank 
of 271,500 to get me from a negative into a positive. Okay. Uh-huh. And that it was a mouthful. Can I ask that you do activity two on your own? Okay, try and figure it out. 